How do you plan on dealing with the growing nuclear threat in Iran? Pretty interest. But you disagree? I disagree because uh, we don't know if they have a weapon. Matter of fact, there's no evidence that they have it. There is no evidence. Israel, Israel claims they do not have it, and our, and our government doesn't. I don't want them to get a weapon, but I think what we're doing is encouraging them to have a weapon because they feel threatened. If you look at a map of, uh, if you look at a map of Iran, we have 45 bases around their country plus our submarines. The Iranians can't possibly attack anybody, and we're worrying about the possibility of one nuclear weapon. Now, just think about the Cold War. The Soviets had 30,000 of them, and we talk to them. The Soviets killed a hundred million people and the Chinese and we worked our way out of it. And if you want to worry about nuclear weapons, worry about the nuclear weapons that were left over from the Soviet Union. They're still floating around. They don't have them all detailed. So we're ready to go to war. I say going to war uh, rapidly like this is risky and it's reckless. Now, if they're so determined to go to war, the only thing I plead with you for, if, 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 if this is the case, is do it properly. Ask the people and ask the Congress for a declaration of war. This is war. People are going to die and you've got to get a de declaration of war. Uh, and just to go and start fighting. But the, the sanctions are already backfiring. And all that we do is literally doing the opposite. When we were attacked, we all came together. When we attack the, uh, when, we, when we put them under uh, attack, they get together and it neutralizes that. It, they rally around their leaders. So what we're doing is literally enhancing the power. Think of the sanctions in what we dealt with Castro. 50 years and Castro is still there. It doesn't work. So right, I would say a different approach. We need to at least, we talk, we talk to the Soviets <coughs> during the Cuban let's, crisis. We at least can talk to somebody who does not, we do not have proof that he has a weapon. Why go to war so carelessly? You know, I, I've, I've tried the moral argument. I've tried the constitutional argument on these issues and they don't, they don't go so well. But they're economic there's an economic argument as well. Matter of fact, Al Qaeda has had a plan to bog us down in the Middle East and bankrupt this country. That's exactly what they're doing. We've spent four trillion dollars of debt in the last ten years being bogged down in the Middle East. It, uh, the neoconservatives who now want us to be in Syria want us to go to Iran and have, have an, another war. And we don't have the money. We're already today gasoline hit six dollars a gallon in Florida, and we don't have the money. So I don't believe I'm going to get the conversion on the moral and the constitutional arguments in the near future, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to win this argument for economic reasons. Just remember when the Soviets left. They left not because we had to fight them, they left because they bankrupted this country, and we better wake up, because that is what we're doing here. We're destroying our currency, and we have a financial crisis on our hands. News going in the right direction, but not far enough. <laughs> the Constitution is very clear. There's no authority for the federal government to be involved in education. <laughs> There's no, no prohibition in the Constitution for the states to be involved in education. That's not a bad position, and we can sort things out. But uh, once, once again, the senators for no, was for No Child Left Behind, but now he's running for president. Now he's for running to repeal No Child Left Behind once again. But, uh, and he calls this a team sport. He has to go along to get along, and that's the way the team plays. But that's what the problem is with Washington. That's what's been going on for so long. So I don't accept that form of government. I understand it. That is the way it works. You were with the majority. You were the whip, and you organized and got these votes all passed. But I think the obligation of all of us should be the oath of office. We should take and it. Shouldn't be the oath to the party. I'm sorry about that. But it isn't the oath to the party. It's the oath to our office to obey the law, and the law is the Constitution. I want to close with this question: Help the voters who still have questions about you. What is the biggest misconception? about you in the public debate right now. Congressman Paul, we'll start with you, sir. I would say the perpetuation of the myth by the media that I can't win. And, uh, <laughs> and, and the totally ignoring some statistics that showed it to be the opposite. Just recently there was a poll in Iowa and it matched all the four of us up against Obama. And guess what? I did the very best. I, and it was, so I, I would say that that is the, the, the biggest myth, but uh, le let me tell you, though, in public perception is one thing, but when you go around and talk to the American people and we have our rallies, 
uh, that misconception isn't there. And uh, I, I think that's the, uh, the biggest misconception that we, I have to deal with.